Hello and welcome to Mountain Moto. This episode is all about my moto vlogging helmet setup for my GoPro. Here we are back in the workshop. I'm gonna talk about this helmet setup and how to set it up for moto vlogging with an external mic, front video of nice high quality, and get it really stable. So what I've got here is an Arai Defiant Base White Frost. They have a black frost, which is just pure matte black. They have an orange frost, which has the orange stripe. I mean, they've got tons of different colors. But the important thing is get the helmet that fits your head. Get the helmet that you're going to be comfortable riding around in for four, six hours. My GoPro setup. Props go to Motonocity for his setup. I took his setup and tweaked it a little bit, and we both arrived, and the reason why I went with Motonocity is because he rides with a Shoei RF1200, which also has a chin spoiler. His chin spoiler is a little bit higher. Let me pull off the GoPro so you can see it, and I'll give you a side shot so you understand why this, oh, come on, why the GoPro just won't work. So as you can see, there's a chin spoiler right there. Or at least I hope you can see. Now that chin spoiler takes up the space that you would need to mount your GoPro. Convenient, huh? Anyway, so we had to come up with an alternative option. This. So it's got a side mount kit. This is the GoPro's GoPro side mount kit. Another GoPro side mount kit and the GoPro front helmet mount kit. So it's a little bit pricey as total for those arms, about 40, 30 to 45 bucks, depending on where you buy it from. Um, the front mount kit actually comes with two of these arms and I only used one. Um, everything was attached with M5 by 20 millimeter cap head screws. Uh, I just really liked the way that that finished off the look and blended in and made everything smooth instead of the big, you know, bulbous GoPro knobs everywhere. We've got the blackout housing. I like the look of it. I've got a matte black helmet. It's a matte black housing. The only thing I don't like about it is it takes away the LEDs. So you don't know when you're flashing. You have to get down close to your mirror and look for the little counter going. But other than that, I think it looks really good. Now placement on these things. Once I identified the area, the region that I wanted to set my, uh, my GoPro or where the base would have to be, I alcohol prepped the entire area. And then with the help of a buddy, thank you, Steve, I used a pencil, marked a little mark when we finally had the absolute position of where we wanted it. Mark a little mark, take it away, take away the GoPro, press it firmly, heat gun, and you want to warm up the space to about 110 degrees, plus or minus 10. So you want it warm. Um, either use a heat gun, a hair dryer will work, and just get this entire area nice and warm. That activates the adhesive even better in the GoPros and then just apply nice firm constant pressure for 30 to 45 seconds. Once you're done with that, this thing will not leave your helmet until you want it to. And then, you know, peeling it off and scraping it and goof off and all of that fun stuff ensues. Now to connect, there are a couple different options. You can either go with a straight out or you can go with a 90. Going with a 90, you're stuck with aftermarket. And GoPro does a little chip inside here to let the, Go, the, the Hero camera, either three or four, um, or any of the originals as well, know that it's got an external mic. And that's where a lot of the issues happen, is in these little chips that's right inside here. And of course, I'm not gonna break this down because this one works and I don't wanna break it. Um, and a lot of people have had a hard time. It's honestly hit or miss. I bought two of these, they're SAMD, um, GoPro to three and a half millimeter, you know, uh, gold plated mics. I bought two of them, both of mine work. 
Lately on Amazon, there's been quite a few one-star reviews on that exact unit that people have had them where they're not working or they're only giving one channel audio or the quality is bad, yada, yada, yada. So it seems like even when I found a brand that at the time had tons of four and five star reviews, even their quality is going to fall off. So if you're absolutely obsessed with, I can only buy one and I need to have the best one, know that you're going to go straight out. It's going to come out a little ways and then it's going to loop back around. And that's going to be the GoPro one. Those things are rock solid and they're falling in price. They're not nearly the 30, 40 bucks that they were per when I bought these. And that's the other reason why I bought these. This one was seven, eight bucks when GoPro's adapter was 30. Uh, it's not hard math. So yeah, this just plugs into the mini USB or micro, micro USB. I can never remember. And then it plugs right into the microphone. In this case, I've got a Sony ECN 60 something, um, anyway, little mic. And it's contained inside my cheek pad. So I route the wire, I pulled up the little skirt, right? Routed the wire underneath the skirt, tucked it all back in. Excess wire was just twist tied into a clean bundle and tucked back inside underneath the cheek pad. Now this is the beauty of the Arise. This is one of the things I love, but every other helmet that I've ran into, there's some option to get, get your mics inside. So inside here, I can remove this cover for cleaning and there's the Senna, mi the Senna microphone or speaker, not microphone, that's the Senna speaker, sorry. And then up towards the front of my cheek pad is where you'll find my Sony mic wrapped in a dead cat. Doesn't sound nice, but yeah, that's what it is. So I had this originally outside of my cheek pad and the fur was tickling me something fierce and it moved all over the place so it drove me nuts so I devised a way to get it inside my cheek pad and I like it I like it a lot